the following webinar, as Marie mentioned, will be on two-way post stitch and slab designs. Uh, it will be broken up into three parts, and I encourage you to ask uh, questions at the end of each segment instead of waiting till the end. If there's a particular topic, please um, let me address it um, during that one segment. I'd rather go um, skip the end of the presentation to miss some of your questions. So please, um, you know, ask them, ask away. I'll do my best to answer them. Going forward with our uh, webinar. The first thing I want to do is uh, push my book, which is the post engine Concrete Principles and Practice. Basically, it is a book that my partner and I, Dirk, wrote and during the kind of the recession when we had almost nothing else to do besides search the internet. And it's effectively a book that's in two parts. The first nine or ten chapters is the undergraduate course in post engine design, and it's currently being used at UCLA, uh, Cal Poly Slow, Cal State LA, and the University of Portland. Um, the last half of the book, let's say chapters 10 through 18, I believe, are more specific job uh, business-related topics. So there's very specific design examples for one-way garages, uh, two-way flat plates like we're going to talk about today, podiums, garages, uh, mat foundations, uh, slab on grade foundations for residential construction, diaphragm design, um, detailing, everything you pretty much do on a daily basis when designing a post engine structure is in this book. And all the topics I'm just covering today will be also in this book. So if you're interested, if this, you know, rings a bell with you at all, uh, you can please uh, look for the book. It's at SK Goshen Associates. And it's about, ooh, I think it's almost close to 400 pages now. We're in our third edition. In addition to the text itself, it, the book is littered with all the construction photographs that we've collected over the 20 years that we've been in business. So we try to talk about it or write about it, but then also show you what it should and should not look like. So moving forward, today we're going to talk about two-way slab designs. Uh, basically, in a very generic sense, they're used in all types of buildings, whereas one-way slabs and beams are typically if you use for garages due to the depth of the beams. Two-way slabs can pretty much be used for any type of application from garages to hotels, offices, apartments, uh, pretty much anything you want to do, a two-way slab can do it. Uh, the columns are typically in a rectangular pattern. Two to one is kind of like the max ratio. There's nothing really wrong with going more than that. But when you have one one side significantly longer than the other side. The slab thickness is obviously based on the longest dimension, so it's efficient in one direction but overly thick in the other. So typically a one-to-one -one is preferred, but in that range is typically a still efficient design to two-to-one. Uh, the big difference is there are no continuous supports, i.e. long walls or beams, much like a one-way system. Basically you have columns and a rectangular uniform pattern, and that's the support you have for the system. Um, obviously the slab is designed to resist load in both directions. That's where you get the two-way slab. This is obviously in conflict with a one-way system where the slab is only designed in one direction and you have temperature and shrinkage in the other. And having said that, temperature and shrinkage reinforcement, which is a code issue for one-way systems, does not apply to a two-way slab. Since you have strength reinforcement in both directions, the temperature and shrinkage, the 100 PSI or the 0018 does not apply to a two-way system. Now, from a very generic point of view, this is the difference between a one-way and two-way system. Now, obviously, the top photograph here is a one-way system. You have a beam, which is right here. You have a bearing wall, which is right here, and the slab only is required to span between the beam and the wall, which is a one-way system. Two-way, obviously, if you have a load right here, the load has to travel up or down, and then left or right. So the load has to go in both directions, and that distinguishes between a slab that is going in one way or a two-way system. Now, again, that's very similar to reinforced concrete, uh, slab design, nothing magical about this, but the, the big difference is you don't have continuous supports, you just have isolated columns. Now, in a two-way PT slab, the slabs are typically between 7 and 12 inches thick. Now, from an economical standpoint, the two-way slabs, if you use a PT system, will typically be two to three inches thinner than your rebar only equivalent. That obviously has a financial impact. It is a savings, but the real savings is the reduction in rebar. So when you can take out, let's say three to four pounds a square foot per deck of rebar, uh, that's a massive savings. And so the slab thickness does help, obviously, the foundations, if you're in a seismic zone, that mass um, reduction does help. But in terms of the money, you know, everything's about money these days. Well, it's always been about money. Um, the rebar reduction is the key financial benefit. 
you know, obviously the slab thickness is based upon the longest typical span. And I'll cover this a little bit more in detail later, but the slab thickness is probably the simplest way to make a system work or really screw it up. If you get the slab thickness right or, you know, within the half inch or so of what I think is right, it's really hard to screw up the design. You know, the P over A, the pre-compression will come out well, the balance loads work out well. So if you can get the slab thickness right, uh, you, you really have to work hard to screw this up.